Hi everyone, I hope you were doing well. First of all, these stories were all very powerful and moving, so thank you for sharing with all of us. The first one I want to talk about is Zachary's piece. I thought that it was very interesting and kind of symbolic um, that the structure called the conflict was in ruins because it mirrors what we saw in the Grossman article, that the conflict in this war was very much more personable and more complicated, um, kind of um, psychologically and emotionally, um, as the targets of this war on the American side were often women and children, and you were often in close combat, um, often not even really combat, just, um, you know, an unexpected killing of someone within their home. Um, and so that's obviously much messier than killing somebody who is, you know, manning a machine gun and um, is kind of threatening your life in that way. And so that's easier to process psychologically than having to kill somebody who is much more defenseless. And I think it also showed um, how the conflict was also messier domestically um, in the sense that citizens had much more negative views of the Vietnam War than they did of World War I and World War II, um, just because it is called the conflict and it's in ruins. Um, which again shows um, symbolically that um, people do not have that same attitude and so they are less inclined to want to preserve these memorials in the same way that they would one dedicated to World War I or World War II. Um, in Brennan's piece, I thought that it was very interesting that his uh, grandfather chose to enlist in the war instead of waiting on the draft to pick him. I thought that that really showed a strong sense of agency um, and, you know, choosing that this is what I want to do instead of just waiting for it to affect you. And I also think that the story did a really, really great job of showing how war is not all good or all bad. Um, I think that in popular um, culture, we have a really um, big tendency of grouping it into like all good or all bad or just some elements of either of the two. Um, and he did a really good job of showing that it's somewhere in the middle. And then Sam's article, I noticed that there could be a very strong double meaning in the coldness and wetness of the wall. Obviously, he talks about that in more of a physical dimension, but I also noticed from the rest of the story that there could also be an underlying meaning in like the wetness being from, you know, the rain, which could symbolize grief and darkness or from tears and then coldness from like a detached emotional state.